So I've just started recording and I'll hand over to you, Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm a PhD student studying cognitive psychology. So I use R pretty much every single day, whether it's for data visualization or data analysis. And I can honestly say that Tidyverse and ggplot have changed my life for the better. So I use these every day. Just a little bit of information about me. You can follow me on Twitter. I also have a GitHub page. And if you're interested in looking at any of this content, content, it's already up on GitHub. So you can look at the code and everything there. The data for the talk, there's also a link right here. And I do want to say that this talk was largely inspired by a tweet I saw from another R ladies who had this awesome visualization of the evolution of ggplot. So I was trying to find a different and interesting data set to use for this talk, and I came across the serials data set, and I thought that would be really fun, so that's what we're gonna use today. In this talk, I'll be going through different ggplots and transforming plots to make them prettier and more informative. So just to get us started, just a quick look at the data. We have the name of different serials, the manufacturers, and then different variables like calories, sugars, and ratings. So this is the data we'll be using in each of the different graphs. To start off, we'll just plot the most basic box plot and we'll get more creative as we go. So here you can see it's only two lines of code and we already get a pretty detailed plot and we're looking at the manufacturers on the x-axis and the grams of sugar on the Y. However, some of this is hard to read and it's not very pretty, so now we'll work on improving it. All right, so next we have, we'll do quite a few things here. Um, first, we'll transform the plot. So now we have the grams of sugar on the X and the manufacturers on the Y. This is mainly because it's easier to read the labels this way. We'll also, we've I've reordered the plots, and this is just with this bit of code right here. So now you can see it goes from the highest grams of sugar to lowest, dependent on the median. We've also, of course, you can tell that we've, I've added color and labels and increased the text size so it's easier to read. And the final change, I think that's really interesting and cool to point out, I've used this, I've recently learned about it in another Our Ladies talk. It's called Theme APA. So here it's using a package called Papaya. And it, in case you ever want to submit something that has to be APA format, it's the perfect um, theme to use. And you can see it just makes it really clean and, and pretty and easy to look at. And then finally, all of these lines are just cleaning up and making the text bigger, removing the legend. And this is using a package called ggeasy. For me, I always forget the code to try to remove the legend. So using this package, all you have to do is type eg easy remove legend and it does it for you. Okay, so in the next plot, I've just added in violin plots. So this is the exact same code with this one additional line. And this is really just to show that you can do things like having box plot and violin plot in the same graph. But everything else is the same. However, this isn't really adding much. So in the next plot, I've removed the box plots, but and instead added in a quantile. So we have the 25 and 75% quantiles and 50% here. And that's using draw quantiles. And we've also added individual data points. This is just using this one line of code geom jitter, which adds the individual points. And jitter separates the data points in case they're directly on top of each other. And finally, I plotted the means in these black diamonds using this line right here. And Okay, so next I wanted to try something that I haven't done before, which is add labels to the individual data points. 
So if you try to run this code on your own, it actually may take a few seconds to load because it's processing a lot of information and will be a little bit overwhelming. But just to look at the graph first before going to the code, you can see this is what, the, what it looks like. So it's a lot of information and a little bit hard to read, but this was all with just a few lines of code. And as I said, I've never done this before. So all I did was Google it and I found this code and was able to implement it pretty easily. The one thing I will mention that I had a little bit of difficulty with was because I used the GM jitter to jitter the data points, you, I also needed to jitter the labels. So to do that, I created this position and made sure that they were set to the same seed. So, so both the data points and the labels were, would jitter to the exact same points. So you can see the arrows line up exactly with the dot. However, as I said, this is a little bit difficult to look at, a lot going on. So for the final graph, I decided I wanted to try to include only labels where the serials had high ratings. So ratings over 50. And to emphasize this, I wanted to put the data points, these data points in black and all others in gray. And I actually had this small hypothesis that higher rating serials would have more grams of sugar. So that's what I was expecting to see. But if we just look at the results, that's actually not the case. They're actually, the higher rated cereals look like they have less grams of sugar. So I guess that's a good thing. Less sugar is always good. But then to look at the code here, I've created this variable for high rating and it's just selecting the serials with ratings greater than 50. And then this is what I'm using in the label argument. And then in order to change the color of the dots, again, that's using the GM jitter. I'm just saying if the rating is higher than 50, make it black and or else make it gray. So you can see in just a few additional lines of code, we can go from a very simple graph to a much prettier and more informative plot, all using ggplot. Right. Yep, yeah, thank you.